Hello, welcome to my channel, Another Bibliophile Reads. My name is Greg, and I'm a bookaholic. I buy way too many books. I buy more books than I can realistically read. However, I have heard a little piece of advice from a fellow booktuber, and his advice was, whoever dies with the most amount of books wins. So I have got some work to do to win this challenge, if it really is a challenge. And buying books, you know, it, it's going to be open to debate because um, the first set of books were not technically bought. They were discovered at a little free library, or should I say, multiple little free libraries. And I had a pretty good good time last week with the Little Free Libraries. The first is Looking on Darkness by Andre Brink. And this is a literary novel. It is banned in South Africa. Or should I say, it was banned in the late 70s when this was um, edition was published. And let me read the back. In South Africa, where interracial sex is the ultimate outrage, this lyrical novel of an erotic affair between a colored actor and a young white woman has been banned as blasphemous and pornographic. Elsewhere, it is hailed as a dynamic, unforgettable work of art and has secured for author Andre Brink the international reputation. So, um, we know that um, South Africa has no longer banned interracial sex. So I presume this ban on the book has been lifted. However, in the United States of America, books like this are gonna be banned again. Yay. Through a Glass Darkly. This is quite a chunker of an historical novel at 755 pages long. And it is, a, I don't want to read the whole thing, but it, it's about a woman who's married to a much, who's married off to a much older man. It got a very good review and very popular back in the 80s when I was working at Crown Books. And this is pretty nice for a little free library book. Next, and I think this has to be for Gerb August. This is Maggie by Lena Kennedy. And let's go see what Maggie is about. Born in the rough heart of London's East End, like a resilient city flower Struggling toward the meager sun, Maggie kept on. <sighs> really? That bad of a metaphor on the back of the book? Through the death of her beloved father, her cherished marriage to a wayward husband of great tenderness and sudden brutality, the solitary fight to raise her four sons, the birth of her coffee-colored baby, Maggie, kept on. Through poverty, the depression, the black shirt marches, the onslaught of World War II and its lonely aftermath, Maggie kept on. Through four teeming decades, touched by passion and tragedy, warmed by the sound of her own brave laughter, Maggie kept on until, like a golden promise, bought with tears and trouble, her life gave her the happiness she earned. Does that put cockles in your heart? I've got so much for Garb August. This might be for Garb August um, 2023 or Garb August 2024, or maybe in Garb August 2025, in which case I'll even have more Garb August books to to, to read. How are you going to stretch Garb August 
from one month to uh, a whole season. John D. McDonald, The Turquoise Lament. I read the first book um, in this series early this year, and it was just a delightful little read. Um, this is much later in the series, so um, I'll probably pick up some earlier candidates, um, or early, not candidate, earlier entries into the series before I read this, but um, it should be fun. The Walking Dead, and that's a volume one, Days Gone By. I am going to admit that I have never watched the TV show of The Walking Dead. I have um, never read any of the graphic novels. But, Middle Free Library, got to pick it up. So that was my Little Free Library haul. And then, going into a um, thrift store where they have uh, books for a dollar, I picked up The Arrangement by Eli Kazan. Now, I have picked up another book by Eli Kazan under a similar circumstance um, and have not read it yet, but for a dollar, why not? Let's see, the back. You know what the arrangement is. So does Eddie Anderson. Marriage is the arrangement. Job, success, society is the arrangement. Above all, survival, sexual, and emotional is the arrangement. The arrangement is about Eddie Anderson, tough-minded, dynamic, ad executive, and brilliant writer, married to Florence and obsessed by the much younger Gwen, and smothering behind his mask of the man who has everything it's about Eddie with his enormous sexual conflicts and his struggling talents crashing out of this arrangement. The arrangement. Tammy Hogue, Night Sins. A peaceful Minnesota town where crime is something that just does not happen is about to face its worst nightmare. A young boy disappears. There are no witnesses, no clues, only a note. Cleverly taunting, casually cruel. Has a, has a cold-blooded kidnapper struck? Or is this the reawakening of a long, quiet serial killer? A tough-minded investigator on her first make-or-break case a local cop who fears that big city evils have come to stalk his small town home. Together, they are hunting for a madman who knows no bounds to protect a town that may never feel safe again. So, I also bought books from Thrift Books. And, um... Let's see what we got here. Prison Ship by Michael Caden. He is the author of the novel that was the basis for the TV show, The Six Million Dollar Man. Now here in the front of the book, they have a publisher's note. Publisher's note. As Martin Caden, dedicated readers know, there is no compromise in his work. It is his specific pride as a storyteller to render faithfully the reality which he describes. In this novel, featuring, featuring convicted felons of earth and beyond, the explicitness of the language and the graphic violence of certain scenes may well startle or even offend some readers. Mm. Therefore, we have, with the author's approval, flag particularly graphic scenes so that the readers who wish to, who, who may wish to avoid them, avoid graphic violence scenes. Those scenes start, okay, so they flagged all the, all, all the naughty bits. So do people read this book or do they just read the naughty bits? Let me read you one of the naughty bits. Now, I don't really know the characters. 
or the story. So um, there are a couple of names in here and I have no idea what they relate to. So just go with the flow. The Eldorn signed and Nart drawn. They spread eagled him on an absorbent glassine slab with neurotic clamps and then slowly and deliberately they had at him. One by one they removed his fingers and then all his toes and then proceeded to amputate his nose and his ears and lips and tongue and all his teeth. And then they removed his testicles and his penis, making certain that he felt every lash shred an ounce of agony. Finally, they used their androids to twist off each arm and leg, and one by one, until only the mute, helpless torso of shuddering agony remained. They saved his eyes for last, pulling them out slowly until the optic nerves twanged like slim metal cables and finally broke loose. They followed the law. They did not kill Drong. They poured acid onto the stump torso and the head, and then they hurled the carcass into a deep garbage and sewage pit to be forgotten forever. The stories were too extreme to be buried, and the planetary security forces on the next world visited and heard the tales, applied neurotic amplifiers to several Eldoran and learned where the remains had been dumped. You know, as graphic violence go, they, they barely rate the B. You know, it's, it's really not all that graphic. But it's about a person ship of aliens coming to Earth and doing naughty things. So um, we shall see. The Spear by James Herbert. Um, and this is a book that I read in high school. Um, I'm just gonna summarize it. Basically, um, they, they find this supposedly spear that pierced the side of Jesus Christ and being crucified. And um, I think this is, as I remember, um, Nazi evil in modern England and at the time that it was written in. Firefly by Pierce Anthony. Um, I picked this up because I saw Criminali talking about it and it's supposed to be a very dicey book. Uh, and I think he described it as uh, Pierce Anthony's rape fantasy book. And um, he, when he talk about authors going over the top, you gotta buy it. And um, here's one that I've read before also, um, Crooked Tree by Robert C. Wilson. Um, I do remember the essential story, but look at this cover. You get the picture of a bear, and this is a step back cover, so um, release the cover, and there is a naked woman, a bear's head. So it is a bear naked woman. Not my joke, it's someone else's joke. And um, yeah, why not? So that was my thrift books haul. I then went to Books A Million. And uh, Books A Million, honestly, is overpriced, even though they're supposed to be really cheap. But I got a few books. Um, one of the books I got was Phantom by Dean Koontz. Um, this is where he, this, this is the toupee coots. And um, I read this in the 80s or the 90s, somewhere around there. I sort of remember the plot. Um, the plot isn't, there is no plot on the back. It's Dean Koontz. Um, closer. They found the town silent, apparently abandoned. Then they found the first body strangely swollen and still warm. 150 dead, 350 missing, 
but the terror had only begun in the tiny mountain town of Snowfield, California, and closer. At first they thought it was the work of a maniac, or of terrorists, or of contamination, or a bizarre new disease, and closer. But then they found the truth, and they saw it in the flesh. And it was worse than anything any of them had ever imagined. Phantoms. Now, as I remember, Dean Koontz could write a good trashy novel in his, in his younger days. So I got it. But the main reason I picked it up is because I owned this book. Now, this is not part of the hall. This is just an example. This is A Crawling Dark by Pauline Dunn. Pauline Dunn is a pseudonym for two sisters. And um, apparently one of the sisters was um, plagiarizing very heavily from this book and um, copying whole passages and main story plots. So what I want to do is um, read The Phantoms and then read this book and pick out all the plagiarized plots and all the plagiarized things because um, it's kind of interesting to see um, what people do with plagiarism. You then get The Hunger by Whitley Stryber. Um, may not be garbage, may just be a standard horror novel. They did not have communion, his um, nonfiction work about um, aliens kidnapping an author. But this is about a female vampire. I remember seeing the movie with Kathleen Deneuve and Susan Sarandon when I was in high school and going, picked up a, a work of nonfiction, Alive, by Piers Paul Reed. This is the famous story of the football team that crashed in the Andes, and oh, tragedy, they had to eat, each, they'd eat the dead bodies. Yum, yum, yum. And lastly, I picked up one of the Hornblower series. Um, this is Hornblower and the Atropos. Um, I have not actually read any Hornblower books yet. I've got the first one that I bought from Thrift Books earlier this year, but I picked it up because of the deals that you have to get at Books A Million. So that is my haul. What is the best book of this haul? If you've read any of them, let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day. Goodbye.